following is an RTVU Enterprise Monitor product demonstration given by Alejandro Ayesteron from Citibank from a session given at TIBCO Now and a recent webinar. In the session, Citibank and SL executives explained how to build a compelling business case for executives and purchasing committees that makes dollars and cents. In this video, Alejandro will demonstrate RTVU Enterprise Monitor running in the production environment for their TIBCO online banking applications. If you wish to view the entire webinar where Alejandro shares his experience building a business case and achieving results, please visit the SL webinars and event pages. It's the actual implementation in production of these dashboards that I was talking to you about. So our online banking has a very, very large set of business transactions or what we call MLIs, right? So each of these MLIs perform different business functions, and, and, and you can see a, a very long list of, of these MLIs or functions for online banking, right? But this here, it's an end-to-end -end transaction set of what we called the online banking. This is the web tier, and even though we're not actively monitoring this tier, I could click here, and I could see here the topology of how the web tier communicate with my application tier. So this is my, my architecture diagram in a nutshell. I don't need an architect to know where are my servers, where are my load balancer, where are the details for that layer. I have them here in one consolidated dashboard. And then I jump again into my monitoring transaction set where I represent my first set of services here in light green and my transactions. Each of these small silver square are my unique business transactions. I'll jump into that in a second. But here at this level, you can see, well, transactions are arriving from my web tier into the mediation tier. And then I have a number of active engines running what I call mediation. In fact, I have 120 in both data centers combined. So one of the common problems when you do deployment in such a complex applications is that, well, perhaps after you make changes, you don't get 120 as you should. You get like 118 because two of them are not necessarily running or they had issues on initialization. Well, if you need to check 120 instances of something, probably your team is gonna check 60 or 70 with luck and then it's gonna say, we're good. Well, here, you got the exact number of instances that should be running for each layer and you are counting them in a single place. If this thing is 118 or if this thing is 122 because you have perhaps ghost processes, this thing is gonna turn yellow. So just by looking at this, you know your implementation is broken and you know you need to check something. And we do that every single time we introduce changes into the online banking because just by checking this, now you know if things are going to create problems later on or not. So another thing is if you click one of these, obviously you see 120 engines and all the uh, transactions that they're running and whatnot. This is a consolidated view of all the 120 engines running mediation, which is extremely hard to get if you're using something like a hog monitor or TIPCO um, administrator because you cannot have these aggregations. So from here, well, yeah, from here you can go and click in any of these and then you can go into the level of detail that you want, showing CPU, heap, current utilization and which of the uh, activities inside the process are, you know, executed more or less. And, and, and this is pretty standard, but before, you clicked in the one you need, you needed a consolidated view. And that is uh, the advantages you get by having everything in one single place, which is for us extremely helpful when you have so many running instances for any given business application. So going back to this, this is just the first level. And then we have, for example, second levels. As I said, these are our individual business transactions. So. If I want to know exactly how our multivalence works, and multivalence is what we call the 4604, I click on the multivalence flow, and I here have another level of detail which shows me the name of the queues, 
the number of consumers, the current inbound message rate, outbound message rate, and pending message counts that I have on these queues right here, right now, for the Mexico data center or for the Querétaro data center because we have active, active configuration of both. So if I start having a lot of pending messages here, I know something's wrong. And by seeing two, it's okay because, I mean, this is consuming real time. This is not showing messages or data for 30 minutes ago. This is right now. So having one, two, or three of these, or four or five, it's okay because as I speak, this, these numbers will go away or will, or will change immediately. And then we have how mediation connects, what cues it uses to connect to global reward services, inquiries, uh, comps, uh, and, and each and every one of these connections is monitored online. So there is no need for anybody to tell me how multivalence works. This is multivalence. This is how it works on real time. And I can switch to my second data center and see if I have a problem or not. If I have any Hawk alert or if I have any issues, these things that are green will turn red. And then you'll see, well, you need to check this particular service in this particular time. So I would not spend hours checking multiple of logs, I will go directly to the areas where this thing are causing issues, right? And uh, the same as this, I have, well, many or, or each and every transaction depicted, like uh, logging, for example. I think this is logging, unless I'm crazy. Now, this is account details. There are some transactions that are very complex, and then we have the section two of the details, and then this is how they uh, we split a very complex transaction in two sections, but again, it's the same information. We wanted not only to demonstrate or, or show those level of a first and second level details for all these transactions, we wanted also to bridge the gap with the business users, and then we created the statistics sections. So in the statistics section, we, we respond Three very basic questions that all the time we used to have about our services. Well, first of all is, what is the transaction count that I have processed, right? Okay, so I can tell you the sending in total, what is my transaction count over the last four hours in all my data centers for each of my MLIs and each of my transaction types. So account movement and account details and multivalence and login and customer information and request to the database profile and customer logout are my top six transactions. No wonder, right? So if we have a problem in any of these MLIs on the top, well, we do have a problem, a, a serious problem, right? But if we have a problem or if, if somebody reports an issue in this 9142 transactions that only have seen 149 transactions in the last four hours, well, it could be a problem, but perhaps it's not as serious as, as having an issue with not being able to retrieve account movement and account details. So this is about the source of the truth. If somebody comes and tells me there is a big problem because voluntary withdrawals are not working, I'm going to tell you, well, okay, that might be the case, which is 71 calls over the last, 70, 71 inquiries over the last four hours, which is not even compared with 73,000 of account movement in the last four hours for other, other kinds of transactions, right? So transaction counts help us to determine how big or how bad incidents or, or, or things that we're seeing could be, right? Another interesting metric is about the uh, average response time for transaction, and this is because we have SLAs to fulfill, right? And then the SLAs, okay, the SLAs have a very, very particular uh, metric that are, are been followed and, and, and carefully scrutinized, right? So as you can see, and, and this is also consolidating all my data centers, I have a problem with, with this premium corporation transaction 9144, which is taking roughly 551 seconds to respond. Well, this is a known issue, and we know that this is happening, but everything else, including block cards and login and multivalence, is between three, three seconds or less. 
So for each of these transactions, we have an SLA, and we know that just by going this here, we are breaching or not breaching our SLA. So if somebody is telling me, hey, customer login is taking a long time, well, I come here, and perhaps instead of four hours, I select the last five minutes, and then I say, well, uh, I see that customer login in all the data centers is taking uh, 1.1 second in the last five minutes. So what are you talking about? So this is the source of the truth for all of these services centralized at real time. That's a big difference when you're on a call and somebody's telling you there's a big affectation for, for logins for online banking. So now we know if we do or we, we don't have an affectation. The last, uh, the last metric, which is very, very important, is about scalability of your infrastructure, and it relates to TPS. Well, TPS is important because that's how you stress your environment. And, and, and normally when you perform stress, you, you, you kind of measure a very particular TPS for each of your legs or for each of your set of services, right? So we, we did, we perform a, uh, and I'm gonna put 30 minutes perhaps. Uh, uh, we're, we're about to enter in Mexico, what we call the peak, which starts at 11 a.m. and, st and stays there until like 2, 3 p.m. On, on TPS. So as you can see in the last 30 minutes, we have a consolidated TPS of around 50, and you can see it here. Well, each of our legs is a stress to support 150 TPS. So by having a consolidated data center load of 50 TPS basically says that our services are cruising, our services are working just fine, and I can sustain three times these load at any given time with any of the legs that I have in production. So if somebody's telling me, look, we're having capacity issues, well, this is a metric that can help to say, well, perhaps capacity for other reasons, but not because of the typical services or the, the middleware services, because, I mean, we are processing 50 TPS in the last 30 minutes, and we stress this to 150 TPS which is three times what you're seeing now. So we have capacity to grow. We perhaps do not require additional hardware and things like that. So once again, source of the truth and, and consolidation of, 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 of what is real and, and what it's not, right? So be able to define this end-to-end -end monitoring requirements and, and, and you need to build this uh, set of dashboards in, in a very efficient way. Uh, estimate this uh, effort to build them, and we have been working with SL also to create an automation for creating these dashboards and to move them into the SDLC for production environments. The five requirements for both uh, business and technology, as you can see, these dashboards are not only meant to uh, respond technical questions, but also pretty simple but meaningful business questions, and perhaps some of these metrics should be added for any of your services and, and they would be meaningful. That's very important. And then establish an agile cadence for deployment and, and updates. In other words, if, if your services are very dynamic and, and you need to introduce changes in the services, but then you don't, ma you don't have a matching monitoring dashboard of these changes, well, it, your monitoring becomes outdated and therefore it loses the, uh, the effectiveness, right? So it's very important that you also be able to, uh, in an agile fashion, you know, uh, change your dashboards as, as, as long as you change also the, the processes on the business that you are deploying. Hopefully um, you have enjoyed what we have presented today. Thank you.